Okay, welcome to the second video on sponges, periphera, and where we left off. This is the um, diagram of a generalized sponge, and if you can understand this diagram, then you can understand most of what you need to know about sponges, because they all work roughly the same way, and have done for 600 million years or so, and um, have not changed over, uh, much over that time. Okay, so uh, when you think of a sponge, you think of uh, like maybe a tube sponge or a barrel sponge or, or one of the golf ball sponges, then there is an outer layer that would be much akin to the skin. And when you look at the sponge, you can, you'll, you'll see that colorful outer layer, and that is made up of a group of cells that act as a protective layer, and you can see those right here. They're sort of flattened. You could call them epithelial cells. Epithelium is uh, like a skin layer, the outer skin layer, but they are not a tissue, again. They are a flattened cell that essentially protects the outside of the sponge, and those are called panacocytes, okay? So whenever you see the root word cyte that refers to cell. For instance, the uh, study of cells is called cytology. So cytes equals cell. Panacocytes, they live, they're the outside skin layer. And collectively, they uh, make up what's called the panacoderm. Okay, so derm, whenever you see the layer, the word derm, or the part word derm in a word, that means layer. So that is the layer that's made up of panacocytes, so panacoderm. And so we've got this um, this out, outer covering of, this, of the uh, sponge. Just like you have skin, these things have a outer layer for protection. Okay, so the water has to move into the sponge so that it can be filtered out for food and for taking away wastes as the water goes through and all of the other functions that the water does bringing in oxygen and the like. So the water comes into the sponge through these little holes but in fact those holes are not so much um, breaks in cells but they're actually a hole in a cell itself. Okay, So this is called a porocyte Okay, site, again we have the cell, and pore, sort of meaning hole. If we go to the next, the next slide, you can see the shape of these things. These are essentially like a donut-shaped hole, okay, or a donut-shaped cell, and this is a cutaway section of it. If you think of a donut with a hole through it, that's where the water is coming into the sponge, through that donut-shaped uh, cell. Okay, and so this cell can actually be expanded or contracted in order to regulate the amount of water going through. That hole can expand or contract, allowing more water or less water to come through. Perhaps there's some sort of environmental condition where there's some something noxious in the water, and maybe they'll um, close these porocytes holes in order to stop water coming in, into the sponge. Okay, but the, so that, is, that serves a regulatory function as well as being the way for water to enter the cell. It's, it's called a porocyte. So again, we have the pore hole bearing cell. Okay, so we've got the porocyte and the panacocytes so the, and water moving in. So far we've covered that. Okay, what makes the water move into this space with, within the sponge? The sponge, the space within the sponge is called the atrium. So any opening within a sponge will be called an atrium. And so the water moves into the atrium, but how does that move? Well, the if you look at what we call a collar cell, and this is another name for it is a coanocyte. Okay, so site, 
again you see that cell or a collar cell the structure of it is this long whip like thing that spins around and we'll have a look at some of the uh, video of some of these in class but this thing whips around uh, these whip like structures are called flagella and when numerous ones of them are all whipping around together and you can see they're all lined up these coanocytes are lined up on the inside of the the sponge the area lining the atrium together they create water movement and that water movement will draw water in through the osculum and there's positive pressure the water moves out more easily through this big hole than it does these little porocytes and so that creates a positive pressure coming in here and water moves out through this opening which is called the osculum okay have a look back here the osculum is the opening out of a sponge okay so generally what you're looking at when you look at a sponge is and you see a lot you, you see some big holes those are going to be X current those are going to be where water is going out of the sponge because you will not be able to see the area where water moves into a sponge you're talking about only one cell and the interior of a cell a hole through a cell so that's going to be much smaller than you can see with the naked eye and generally when you see holes in sponges that is where the water is moving out okay so another have another look at this collar cell so these collar cells create a lot of water movement with this long flagella and the reason they're called collar cells is because they have a ring or collar around the flagella of these little projections called cilia okay, and we're going to see lots of examples of ciliated surfaces over the course of this marine invertebrate biology course and often they are there in order to increase surface area and you could say that about this but these ones are all more of a filtering device so as the flagella creates water movement the water is drawn through these through these cilia and food particles get stuck onto the the surfaces of these cilia okay so these filter out food particles bacteria um, perhaps uh, uh, phytoplankton whatever might be in the water any organic material that's edible will be essentially taken in by the or will be stuck on these on these cilia okay so what we can see is these coanocytes line the interior the atrium the sponge and together as the panacoderm made or the panacocytes together made the panacoderm, derm being layer, the coanocytes together make a coanoderm. Okay, coanoderm. So 
that's the the layer of choanocytes on the interior of the atrium. Okay, so the next thing that we've got to look at are what are called amoebocytes. Okay, an amoeba is a sort of uh, amorphous, sort of shapeless uh, cell that can ooze around like a blob. All right, and you'll see these amoebocytes on the interior of the the sponge between the two layers. You've got your panacocytes on the outside, choanocytes on the inside, and then between them there is a layer that's filled with a jelly-like substance. Okay? So the jelly-like substance is known as mesohyle, meso being middle. So mesohyle is like a, you can imagine it being like jelly. And so jelly is stiffer, a little bit stiffer than uh, than water when it when it sets, right? So that gives the sponge a bit of its structural support. There are some other fibers and uh, other materials that that help in terms of holding the sponge up. But one of the things that gives the the sponge its structural support is a mesohyle, it's jelly-like material. Okay, so it's jelly-like, which means that it does have some support, but it also allows these amoebocytes to wander through that layer between the panacoderm and the coanoderm. And what these amoebocytes can do is they can come out and phagocytize or ingest these little particles. So the collar cells and the amoebocytes can both uh, ingest these little particles by phagocytosis, which is essentially just oozing around that food particle and digesting it within the cell. But these uh, amoebocytes will also wander around with those digested materials and share that uh, those nutrients with these other cells. For example, the porocytes and the coanocytes. Okay, now the amoebocytes all have another job, which is that they can sometimes turn into eggs, okay, or oocytes, OO being eggs, and whenever you see OO uh, together, uh, then that refers to a reproductive cell, okay, and a female, so ova, you might say here ovaries, so O-V-A, O-O. So the amoeba have the job of being becoming uh, eggs at certain times, and they also have the job of, of um, secreting these things called spicules. All right, so spicules are another type of support structure within the sponge colony. So let's have a quick look at, um, uh, at spicules. So here are some pictures of spicules. All right, and so these spicules—they're made of either of calcium carbonate or silica. We'll talk a little bit more about these in the next video, and they give a lot of support. These ones are uh, have been um, removed from the sponge and are sitting in a jumble. But these things will sit in a in a lattice-like structure that gives support. It's like the girders of the colony. Okay, so these spicules will help support the colony. Okay, so you've got spicules, you've got mesohyle giving the support to the colony, you've got the coanocytes lining the interior of the atrium, beating their flagella and creating a positive pressure within the atrium which pulls water in through the porocytes and the water moves out through into the atrium and out through the osculum. Okay, once the water is inside the the cell, then the it's filtered by the by the cilia on the coanocytes. And on the outside, you have the panacocytes making up the panacoderm as an outer protective layer, and the porocytes 
being the donut shaped cells that make the hole that have the holes that water can move in and pretty much if you can get that down the rest of the detail about this animal is what we'll be focusing on in the next couple of videos so if you can understand this diagram to that point understand all these terms and know um, what their function is then you are a good portion of the way towards understanding sponges okay we'll leave it there and come back to the next video uh, Periphera 3